Imagine it's 2011 and you're at an Indie Games Awards ceremony not as a nominee or even a guest actually, but as a volunteer helping out at the back of the room. Up on stage, Notch has just accepted his second award of the evening, the grand prize for his work on Minecraft, a game that was already breaking all sorts of records. Now imagine, as you stand there, right at the back, that not too long ago you created a game as well. The game credited as being the inspiration for Minecraft's now iconic blocky design. Ah, oh, it's just like, it's it's just awful. And so like, it was just years and years and years of this, of feeling like, of feeling bad. That was Zach Barth, the creator of Infiniminer, a game of procedurally generated block-filled landscapes in which you mine for resources and build things. Yeah, the similarities with Minecraft aren't so difficult to spot, are they? And Notch has, on multiple occasions, pointed to Infinity Miner as being the catalyst that led to him creating Minecraft in the way that he did. But don't get me wrong, this isn't the story of how some Nordic man in a hat stole Zach Barth's idea and his future, and how just a few years later, it should have been him selling his game studio for two and a half billion dollars. That's, that's not it, that's not what we're talking about, and Zach is often the first to point this out. No, instead, this is the story of what it's like to I've created something that's so undeniably adjacent to what has become the most successful video game of all time. It's not like I felt like this was like a direct ripoff of my game. It's not a clone. It's very clearly not a clone, you know, like all the, the, the tree punching shit I never would have done in any game. But like, I'm still feeling bad about it, like inexplicably. Imagine every time Minecraft hits a new milestone, and that'll happen a lot over the years, someone close to you, a friend, a family member, a peer, gets in touch to say, hey, have you, have you seen this? How, how do you feel about that? Are you okay? At first it was just like, whatever, that's a different thing. But like very quickly, the story in the Barth household becomes like, oh, why didn't you do that? Nobody was consciously saying it. It's just out there, right? Like I'm unsure, I'm not confident. I don't know what the deal happened, right? It kind of feels like the narrative just kind of becomes, oh, like that could have been you. Like you could have made that game. And it's easy to imagine how a thought like that might fester. Zach had been playing around with this idea of games that allowed you to create content for them as you played since college. In fact, Infinity Miner was technically the fifth or maybe sixth game, it's hard to tell because not all of them were finished, in something that Zach likes to call the Infinity franchise. The first, Infinitron, was actually a tabletop game in which players would create their units and even the terrain itself from scratch as they played. The rules are still publicly available, although Zach himself admits to have only played it once properly and, in his words, it lasted 8 hours and I'm pretty sure everyone was unhappy by the end. Still though, if you're looking for the seed that started this whole thing, you can find it here, in this rule sheet. There was actually a planned sequel to Infinitron, by the way, called, and I kid you not, Infinicraft. Although this quick sketch is about as far as that got with its design. That name though. Soon enough, the Infinity franchise would switch over to video games, starting with Infinity Frag. Around this time was when RTS, FPS hybrids were popular. I don't wanna say popular. It was when they were like a thing. Zach wanted to take that concept and bring it into his series of games in which players were creating things as they play. And so he thinks, what if the RTS portion wasn't just about placing buildings and structures on the map, but also designing them from scratch? Anyway, one day he finds himself talking about this idea with a friend of his, Keith Holman. And I think he like misunderstood like what I was describing. And he's like, oh, like what if you know you place the blocks instead of like in this this UI, but like by just like where you're like looking at them. And so Infinifrag drops the real-time strategy bits altogether, but holds on to the idea of building bases as you play, albeit now entirely in first person. Its sequel, which was never finished, had Zach experimenting with procedurally generated worlds and even different biomes. Look at these images and tell me you don't understand the link between this series of games and Minecraft. Oh my god. Anyway, if we jump forwards to 2009, Zach has now graduated college and is working for Microsoft, not as part of their games division, but on the team that does Office, where he's feeling a little creatively stifled, actually. And so, of course, in his free time, he's still tinkering away on various video game projects, one of which will become Infinity Miner. I was playing like TF2 and Motherload and I had made Infinifrag and so I was like I'm gonna combine all these things together and make like a competitive team-based violent mining game where you mine this procedural world. Zach's blog from the time is still archived and so you can see how quickly this game started to take shape. This right here is the very first screenshot he shared in the February of 2009 along with the description it's a game about mining and building and blocks. Lots of blocks. 
Two months later and the game is freely available for anyone to download because back then Zack didn't really think about selling his games, not because he didn't want to, but because he didn't really think that was an option for someone like him. Big studios sell games, right? Not individuals. And I mean, who would want to pay money for a game about mining that's mostly been created by a single person? That that wouldn't be popular for at least another six months. And so yeah, the game goes live on Zack's site and asked him about the initial reaction he received from players. Hey, people liked it and they immediately started uh, getting really into it and then turning it into things that they wanted it to be, which for me was really confusing because it's like, wait, no, hold on, I make games because I, I want to make the stuff like that I want it to be. In Zack's mind, Infinity Miner was meant to be that competitive, team-based, violent mining game which he'd first envisioned, but it very quickly started evolving into something else. It wasn't just that players were ignoring his rules, although they were doing that too, they were also fundamentally changing the game. You see, Zack didn't have the experience that he has now, and have released Infinity Miner in a way that made it very easy to hack. And that really like kind of freaked me out. I can't even like authoritatively do anything with the game, right? Like I can change it, but then like if somebody else just like has more popular changes, they can just take off and become like the real version of Infinity Miner. This was all new to Zack and he didn't much like it. Eventually he figured, you know what, let's at least just make this official. And by May of that year, Infinity Miner was released as open source meaning that now anyone could access its code and propose changes, but at least they'd be encouraged to, well, return to Zack's site to do that. My previous games, there was never any, like, reason to do that, but in Finaminer, like, the, the whole building thing, like, really captured people's imagination in such a compelling way that they wanted to be able to do their own shit with it. That, that was very much, like, foreshadowing everything that would come after, I suppose, right? It was too good of an idea. Despite going open source, Zack's enthusiasm for this very quickly waned, and a month later he'd even go as far as announcing that he was done making games entirely. In retrospect, he tells me this was more about lashing out than anything else, and he'd take it all back about a month later, but he was done with Infinity Miner. That was over. And so Zack did what he always had and promptly moved on to the next idea, unaware that the ripple effects from that one game would follow him around for probably the rest of his life. There's actually a video from around this time, back before Minecraft was even called Minecraft. It was just a cave game back then. The video description read as follows. This is a very early test of an Infinity Miner clone I'm working on. It will have more resource management and materials if I ever get around to finishing it. Less than two years later, Zack is volunteering at the award ceremony where Notch wins the grand prize. And it's gotta be in moments like that, that that horrible voice right at the back of your head starts whispering things like, this doesn't feel right. Something unfair has happened here. You shouldn't be okay with this. For a long time, that was sort of like the the mood like surrounding this, right? And so if that's the mood, when you're in Target and you see a rack of Minecraft t-shirts for the first time, you're just like, oh, for fuck's sake, you know? It gets worse too. While Zach was working at Microsoft, they actually brought him into the meeting in which the company decided it wanted Minecraft on the Xbox 360. So like, I'm just sitting there in the meeting, I don't say a word the whole time, and then they're just talking about Minecraft and like bringing Minecraft to the platform and like how many like gajillion dollars like it's gonna do. And I'm just like, I don't know why I'm here. But this, is, this is pretty humiliating. It's important to point out here that Minecraft's success did not crush Zack. It very much didn't. The next game he'd make after Infinity Miner was called Space Chem and would go on to launch his game dev career, leading on to Zack creating his own studio, Zactronics, and releasing a bunch of extremely well-loved puzzle games about making stuff over the years. And so my question for Zack was, how do you stop yourself from just putting your creative ambitions to one side going back to that target and getting arrested for stealing loads and loads of Minecraft t-shirts instead. You can feel bad and still be productive. Like, the two aren't mutually exclusive. I feel bad all the time about stuff, right? I still manage to get stuff done. But the longer answer, according to Zach, is that things just got easier with time. The more Minecraft grew, the less and less it started to resemble his work with Infinity Miner. And at some point, Minecraft stopped being just a game and became an entire industry in its own right. And strangely enough, that also seemed to help. In fact, Zack does remember the day he got over all this, and it's probably not the day you might imagine. 
And that was the day that Microsoft bought Minecraft for $2 billion. Oh my God, that was the day that everything just got better. Like for, for real, I'm not even like, like, I'm not even joking. Like that was the day that everything like got so much better because it's like, okay, so if Microsoft just spent $2 billion on this, right? After it's already made a fuck ton of money. That means that this is literally the most successful game like ever, right? Yeah, I don't know. It just it just seemed like such a farce at that point. Like two billion dollars for a game. Like no game has ever been bought for anything close to two billion dollars. Like that that's just like I guess it's just that. Like it was just it was just such a crazy, absurd thing that like it just defies reason and like you can't even like it's it's just it's a, it's hilarious. I asked Zach if he's ever spoken to Notch about any of this, and he told me that no, he hasn't. Although he did get in touch with him once after years of not being invited to the big Minecraft party at GDC, Zach decided to put on a competing Infinity Miner party at exactly the same time, although it was hosted in an Indian restaurant rather than something like this. So you know the vibe was slightly different, but he decided to send Notch an invitation. Notch replied and said he couldn't make it due to a prior engagement. And so that's the story behind Infinity Miner, the game that inspired Minecraft. Thank you so much to Zach Barr for sharing it. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like or subscribe to the channel or do something before another YouTuber is inspired to tell the story themselves and uh, does it in a way that's frankly more appealing to a mainstream audience, therefore achieving the viral success that we never could. Because I, had to, I don't have what Zach Barth has. I won't take something like that well at all. I just won't. And we'd also like to say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a website about getting better at things that you're not very good at. Like for example, in my case, Instagram. I recently watched this class by photographer Brandon Wolfel and he has 3.1 million followers on the gram. I have 800, so plenty to learn. One thing I did pick up is that when he's taking photos at night, he doesn't like to rely on flash too much. Instead, preferring to work with props that can act as a light source themselves. Let's give that a whirl, shall we? Watch out, Chris. <laughs> you know what? Fair play, Brandon. That's come out a treat. Anyway, if you hate photographs, Skillshare also offers a range of different classes from video editing to productivity to game development, which might be of interest to some of you, with a membership costing less than $10 per month. And hey, if you'd like to have a look free of charge, the first 500 people to use this link right here will get two months premium membership without paying a penny. So give that a go if you like. Thank you for watching, and as ever, thank you so much to our patrons for supporting the work that we do. Cheers.